So I thought tonight, instead of dealing with some specific real estate topic, we would deal in the philosophy of real estate, being a real why we invest in real estate, and based on the premise that a little reflection is good for the soul. In Google, if you look up, and it's the place to start, so if you want to talk about opportunity, you've got to define opportunity. And it's, a lot of people, it means different things. Google defines it as a set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. By definition, that's karma. It's good karma, bad karma, that set of circumstances that occur. Webster, defined Merriam-Webster dictionary, it's an amount of time or situation in which something can be done. That's, you know, you either get good timing or bad timing. B.E. Jernigan, my grandfather, defined opportunity as the ability to have a choice. And I've always liked that definition the best of all that I've ever heard. You have no opportunity if you have no choices. The ability to invest in real estate, to invest in real estate creates limitless choices, but they all involve certain intrinsic values. The guru usual answers for what you talk to in several of the books that are back here, they talk about an opportunity as being something that is immediate results. You're going to start doing something in real estate and you're going to get an immediate result. You could do it today with no money, no credit, no job. You can make a lot of money today. You can buy real estate, tax liens, notes, without any risk today. You can get big tax write-offs today. But real estate, if we just step back from it and we look at investing, that's not what real estate is really about. In reality, real estate is a long-term business. You have to think about, the, and I use analogies, and the one I like on real estate, it's just like a streetcar in San Francisco. Our timeline may be short. We may be getting on the streetcar and getting off, but it was moving before we got on it, and it'll be moving after we get off of it. Sometimes when we get on, it'll be really crowded, and it'll be hard to find a place. Other times we'll step on, and there won't be anybody on it. We'll be there all by ourselves. But regardless, that streetcar is moving. And it's important to understand that thought process because real estate as we do it today is in the United States is basically unchanged since about 18, the panic of 1819. So for 200 years, business in real estate is being done almost exactly the same way as it was in 1820. It doesn't make any difference whether you're using creative finance, as Bruce is going to talk about, or whether you're using basic bank mortgage financing. It's a business that is based on time and terms. Those conditions never change. And it is the only investment opportunity from the time that it was you started with it, it was being bought and sold, is based on financial leverage. At no time in America, have you ever been required to pay cash for property? People say you must pay cash, but you've always been able to borrow the money against that mortgage or against that deed or against the crop you're going to put in on that property. So there is something that there has always been financial leverage and there's no other commodity or investment like that in the country, in the world for that matter. And the other thing about real estate investing that's easy to overlook it is that it is the most optimistic investment. And, it, and the reason that it is, is because you're always valuing real estate. And I talk about this frequently. Real estate is valued on comps, what things sell for. That's the way that people do it. That's the way home buyers do it. But investors are looking at the future because you can't buy anything today and sell it yesterday. You're buying something today to sell into the future. And in the future, you are anticipating what people are going to earn. You have to think in terms of what is the earning capacity of the people that are going to want or live near wherever the property is that I'm buying. 
It is the earning capacity, the ability to have funds to spend on housing, is what creates the value in the future for the investors. So we are always thinking in terms of that trolley is going to get to where I want to go. Whether it's moving slower or faster than I may want it to, our, my goal is, the belief, my comfort is, that it is going to get where I want to go. So in 2010, when everything was crashing, there were plenty of people buying real estate because they believed in the future of real estate. There are plenty of people who are buying real estate today because they believe in the future of real estate. And if you believe in the future of real estate, you have to believe in the community. And we shape the communities in which we live. 